Welcome to this tutorial. I'm going to be looking at making a bookmark um, and I'm going to try out uh, a number of ideas. Uh, anyway, let's get started. I'm going to be using a laser cutter to do this and to control the laser cutter, I'm going to use TechSoft 2D Design version 3. So let's come to the start menu here. I'm going to type in V3, which is going to give me access to TechSoft Design version 3 and type enter on the keyboard and we're into the software. As usual, I'm going to make a few little changes here. I'm going to right click on Gridlock. I think what I'm actually going to do here is, can I get the tools up and running? No. Nope. Okay, fair enough. Then. I'll keep as it is. Uh, what I'm going to do here is um, change the grid settings. So I'm going to have a 5 mil grid. Um, and I'm going to make sure that it's going to be in lines and I'm going to make this pale blue. The reason why I'm doing this is because I find a 5 mil grid gives me an awful lot more kind of resolution, a lot more control. Um, the, whoops, not large crosses, lines. The uh, the lines give me uh, an easier way of interacting with the grid and making it pale blue makes it subtle but clear. So let's just confirm that and there we go. We're ready to rock and roll. Um, right now then, uh, let's see. What I'm going to do with this is I'm, I'm, I'm just going to dive in there and just make something uh, very, very quickly. I'm not going to worry here about dimensioning or scaling. Then I'm going to laser cut it and then I'm going to uh, reflect on uh, its successes and its failures. So let's just go with this. Let's have a see. I'm going to bring in um, a Google tab here. I'm going to get an image off the internet just to sort of experiment and see what I can do. So let's get a go with uh, a silhouette. Got to make sure I spell that correctly there of a cat. And let's just come to images. And I'm just going to come to tools here. I want to make sure the size is large so I get a very high resolution image, lots of pixels. And I'm going to go to type and go to clip art to see what that gives me. Okay, fantastic. Lots of cat images here. I'm going to go with a classic kind of image. Let's have a look at this one. That looks really, really good. I'm a bit worried here about this. Um, this background. Is it a transparent background or is it someone that's given us like this checkered flag background? Let's find out. If I just right click on that copy image, let's come back to 2D design here and let's just go edit and paste or I can go control and V of course. And that is absolutely massive and has not worked at all. So that was a bit of a failure. Let's delete that with a delete key. Let's just wheel mouse back in there so we can see what we are doing. Okay, let's try another image here. Let's go for this one here and see what happens with this. In fact, this one here, yeah, let's try a few. Let's, this has got a, what appears to be a transparent background again. Copy image, back to here, paste. Yep, so the transparent image is not working nicely there. Let's come back to our cat images. Let's try this one. This does not have a transparent background. This one has a white background. Let's try and copy this. Let's come back into here and paste. And that one's actually worked, but I've got this logo down in the bottom right hand corner here, which is causing a problem. So clearly I've got to do a little bit of uh, pre-processing of this image before I put it into 2D design. Okay, I'm gonna load up here paint.net. Okay, I'm using paint.net because it's it's a really great, simple photo editing app for Windows, which is free. You can use any online or computer-based editing tool yourself, but paint.net, I just love because of its simplicity. Let's come back to these images here. Let's come back to this one here that I tried to do before the transparency. Again, I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna come back to paint.net and I'm gonna paste this as a new image, not just paste into this image or as a new layer, as a completely new image. And notice the shortcut there is control plus alt plus V. So I'm gonna do control plus alt plus V on the keyboard and there we are. And let's just see if this is a transparent background. If I just add in a new layer here, let's bring the cat to the front uh, and let's just get a brush tool with a big brush tip on there in red. And what I should find now is if I draw on layer two, I see it here, but as I go behind, yes, it disappears. And if I bring, yeah, that works. That shows me here that it is transparent because I can see that the red worm uh, goes behind the cat, but shows through the transparent background of this top layer here. 
Okay, so let's just delete that layer there. That's absolutely perfect. Okay, so to make this work with 2D design, uh, we need to know a little bit about file type here. Uh, this is, uh, I assume, a PNG. In fact, to confirm that, let's come back to here. Let's right click with Save Image As, and it's a PNG file, a picture network group file. That is basically a compressed file like a JPEG, but it supports transparency. Uh, that's why 2D Design didn't like it. So what I'm going to do here is file, uh, in fact, let's have a see. I could save this as a BMP. I could go save as, and I could save it as a BMP, uh, and that would be absolutely fantastic. But instead, let's try this. Let's add a new layer in here. Let's uh, flip this around so white is the primary color. Let's bucket fill that background, and then bring the cat in front. And then let's just try and merge that layer down. So now we have a cat, black silhouette of a cat, with a white background or a transparent background. Right, let's just do Control Select All here or Control A. Uh, let's Control C or Edit Copy. Let's come back into 2D Design. I'm going to delete that one and let's paste it in. Does that work? Yes, that works. Okay. Um, now, if I were to go, let's go back to Paint.net again here. Let's just come back to what am I doing here? Let's come back to this design here with this logo. Let's see how I could work with that. Let's copy the image, come back to paint.net. I'm going to, going to do Control Alt V to paste it to a new image. How would this work? Well, let's have a see. I'm going to select the simplest ways I can do this, aren't there? I mean, I could just delete that logo there, but I'm going to do something else. I'm going to select with a magic wand tool the cat. I'm going to go to image. And I'm going to go crop to selection. And that now creates just the black silhouette of the cat, again, with a transparent background. And then I could now apply a new background, fill that in white, bring the cat to the front and merge down to one layer. And then select, whoops, a daisy, uh, control uh, A or edit select all, control C or copy. And then in here, I could paste that in. Voila. Okay. Well, I'm not going to bother with that one. I'm going to look at this one here. And I can see straight away if I just click on the move button here, move my mouse and click again. It's a bit of a strange interface with 2D design. It's far bigger than the drawing space. This drawing space I can see here. If I go to setup, drawing layout is A3. Uh, that's double size of A4. Um, so this is a massive cat. If I were to laser cut or print this now, it would be huge. Um, so I need to scale this down. To scale this down, I'm not going to left click because I'm going to distort the image. I'm going to uh, right click. And that means that as I distort this, you'll notice hopefully there that that oh, kind of wireframe window that you can see is always in proportion to the original image. And let's just bring it in here and let's just position that where I want it to be. Okay, let's zoom in here. Um, I'm going to right click, bring this down. Um, and I'm going to make it what I consider to be a reasonable size. Okay, notice that because I have got gridlock turned on from the beginning of this experience, that the bottom left hand corner there of this design is snapping onto the grid. Okay, absolutely wonderful. Now I need to make this into a bookmark. And to do this, my vision is that I want to have uh, this cat sticking out to the top of the book and then something beneath the cat here, which is kind of like gonna hold the page. So let's have a see how this is going to go. I need to have something coming down into the page, but I want to first of all, get an outline of this cat. So if I go to bitmap and I go to contour bitmap, um, let's have a see, I'm going to do a zero millimeter contour graphical path, excluding transparent color around this cat, the outside. Let's click on okay there. Let's click on the cat. It's gonna give it a few seconds. And now what I should have here is the outline of the cat. That is really cool. Notice here, I've still got gridlock turned on, super important. And when I bring this back over, I can snap it back over the top. Now you might also want to experiment here a little bit here with the other tools. If I go to bitmap and I go to vectorize bitmap rather than contour, what this is going to do is allow me to convert this bitmap, which is made of a series of pixels into a vector, which basically is defined by a starting point and ending point. Um, and, um, and sometimes you can have an equation that defines the, 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 the 
the curve of the line. Anyway, suffice to say, vectors are better if you can get them. If I go into monochrome here, because it's a monochrome image, um, it's got a transparent background. That's absolutely okay. I'm going to leave everything else as it is. Okay. Super important here, custom settings. I'm going to make sure my resolution is maxed out. This is a very high, res high resolution image, and that's going to give me a better defined profile of the uh, the edge of the, of the silhouette. Confirm that. This is going to take a while because it's a very high resolution image and it, as a result, it's got more pixels to assess. This outline tool is probably um, the easier routine in most cases, but this, uh, this the contour, should I say, but this vectorizing is actually a lot more powerful. Now, this really is having a good thing to itself. The other problem we have here is that if I just show you my task manager, is that this is a single threaded process. If I just come to here and look at all the cores of my computer running here, if you notice, I've only got 24% usage. This uh, shows that my CPU zero is kind of flat out here processing this work and all the other cores aren't really being used on this multi-core processor. So even though I think this is an eight core processor, um, it is somewhat struggling. And I can see here that TechSoft 2D Design seems to be unresponsive. I can promise you it's still okay. Um, it's just having a good thing to itself. Maybe what I should have done here, because it's such a high resolution image, image I shouldn't have gone for the, like, the maximum resolution there. I should have pulled it back to maybe 1,000 pixels rather than 2,000 pixels, which is the original source. Okay, well, this isn't very exciting. I'm going to pause the video and then pick it up when it wakes up. And it literally was an extra five seconds there. So there you go. Uh, right, hopefully we're running again here. What I want to show here is that uh, what we actually have here, I think, are two separate parts. Let me just move one of these to the side here. No, no, that's not the case. Okay, there are two parts here, though, I can promise you. If I select this and go edit and ungroup or control U, ungroup complete. Okay, now what I've got is the out the background and the cat and this can cause a lot of confusion make sure uh probably you want to delete the background yeah and just be left with the cat so what's the difference now between this and this well let's see if i come to fill and i fill the cat black they're now the same if i come to this vectorized cat and i go to fill no fill then that's now like the contour let's just zoom in here and make sure this is good oh there's a few weird things here can you see what's happened there there's a few weird things happening there. And what I need to do here is probably select that weird problem and then zoom out. And look, there's more problems. So what is this telling me? This is telling me that it's probably better to do just the outline. In this case, there are variations of what can happen, but I'll probably go with this version right here. Although looking, if I select them both and shift select here, let's just come to start edit and see how many polygons are in place. Right, okay, this is interesting. You can see here that there are many more nodes in this polygon defining the details than there are here, which tells me that potentially this is more accurate. Although having said that, uh, this seems to have a few little kinks in it. I don't know, swings and roundabouts. I would go with the outline. Let's just get rid of that one right there. Okay, so that was a lot of kind of just playing around and experimenting, but this is the kind of thing that I hope you do naturally when you're looking at software and trying things out. And I'm just giving you my kind of insight and the way that I operate. So I'm gonna stop this video right here and we're gonna pick up from here in the next installment. Hope to see you then.